I'm glad what I I'm glad what I said reminded you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Bam, there we go. <laughs> okay, ready. All right, fair enough. So in uh, my comment uh, is a, a correction to the January 25th meeting minutes where it talks about at the end, uh, the board comments. And mine was the first board comment uh, and it had to do with uh, uh, speaking with regard to a Kathy Wisterbarth's uh, comment that she had made during public comment. Uh, that when we're talking during the board meetings, if we refer too much to the work session on Friday, um, I think it's going to become contentious, which it did. And we had agreed uh, two weeks ago, I think it was when we had this meeting the first time, that we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to use it as a dress rehearsal. <clears throat> so I think we need to have the discussion here in order to be able to bring out information, um, get information, get questions answered, you know, and then when we're in the actual board meeting, it's as though we're having the board meeting for the first time and we bring to the board meeting the comments or data that we learned here if we need to so that everybody of the public you know has uh you know has all the information I, that was that was in the that was what occurred and it can be found at two hours 17 minutes 31 seconds of the recorded meeting on youtube and I don't recall that Bill Palmer spoke next at all, actually, but then it was following me that, uh, Josh, you spoke then about the, the winter activities. So I don't know what that part in there about Bill was. So I don't know where that came from. Okay, and I guess just since we're, we're talking about um, meeting minutes now and potentially making a change if, if you are going to change anything that's in the meeting packet, Josh, that's posted online, we need to make sure that um, whatever it is that you change is then uploaded to the packet. Will do. Okay. All right. And I guess um, just, I, I, you know, like what you said, Tim, um, I think we do need to be, you know, I, I, the, the point of having this work session is to ask questions and whatever, and, and, the, and we don't want to like rehash everything on Monday. That being said, if we could make a brief summary, like I, you know, if it was something about a bill, and I think you've done that before, um, sorry, Bill, I'm going to say bill again, or some about a payment bill, you would say, you know, during the work session, um, I asked a question and it was clarified. I mean, you just kind of like said you already asked the question and, and it was answered. I mean, um, and no additional information. I mean, I guess my thought is, is if no additional information is needed or supplemental, I mean, if we're asking the question and it's a clarity thing, um, that I guess I thought was the point of the work session. So, I don't know, just saying. Yeah, I guess the, I guess the point would be that if, if there's a question, like for instance, as you mentioned, the payment of bills, uh, then it, it would give the treasurer the opportunity to you know, if she didn't know on Friday's meeting, the answer to the question, have an opportunity to get the, get it answered by Monday night. Right. But if the question was answered, you know, when we're discussing the work session, then you're not really going to ask the same question again. Right. Well, no, I can't. The information's way, there. I, I can review you that. You find a way to incorporate it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just getting clarification for myself. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I have done that in the past where I'll just reiterate that you know, I, it was discussed on Friday, and this was the, the question that was asked, and this was the answer that was given, or give, uh, you know, Ms. McGuire the opportunity to answer it on Monday night. Um, okay. All right. Any other, this, like, discussion on meeting minutes? Uh, I have a couple things. Okay. Um, I don't see on the January 11th meeting minutes, we're in the, and I'm looking for my email that I sent. Uh, but I noticed that the in board comment, it still says that revenue revenue was down instead of state shared revenue. Hmm. So I don't see that correction being made. So, but I'm trying to locate my emails because I think there was four things. So I can't remember the other ones, but um, so that for sure, maybe. And then I have uh, a couple on the, January 25th ones also. Um, in the consent agenda, there's a typo with minutes is spelled incorrectly. 
Under the IT services, I'm not sure. What does SLA mean? Service, service level, level agreement. agreement. Okay, so I didn't know if, you know, if anybody would, else would know that or I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I agree with that point, Jimmy. Thank point. you. Um, the, the, the one title, there's two titles for a Sable sewer contract. And maybe the second one should say something about the pump repairs instead, because I'm not sure that it's the same. It was the item that Mitch added to go, he had the latitude to get the pumps repaired and it's got the same title. Um, oh, right. Yeah, it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be a Sobel sewer contract. Yeah. So right. the second one should be say something about pump replacement or something, I guess. Whatever. I think just even, yeah, lift station four. Right, whatever. Or yeah, but whatever, yeah. Not a Sobel river, not a Sobel sewer contract. Right, yep. Um, and then under the discussion for Rockfest, I, um, Mr. Taser asked about the waiver fee, but we did not, it, in the minutes, it's not confirmed that we did, that we were waiving it. And maybe we want to do that. Um, should anything happen and we have to look back six months from now and go, yes, we did waive the fee. No, we didn't waive the fee and this is why, whatever. So perhaps we could add that. And then under my board comment, uh, if we could, it kind of is just kind of hanging out there. So if we could put, I was referring to the conversation about the community center when it, uh, the proceeds from the sale of the community center, if that could be put in front of that sentence. Whoops. Like proceeds from the sale of the OACCR funds are in Michigan class. Please. Gotcha. Okay, are you, are, are you, I mean, did you get all those, Josh? Yes. Okay. And I can, I can email you that too. Yeah, if you could, just to make sure I have it right. Yep, no problem. I just literally just got done going through it, so. Okay. So, so again, if we re, we revise that, then what is on in the board packet for Monday night um, needs to reflect that so that, you know, when it's on the agenda, we can, we're actually adopting, you know, that's where we ran into the hiccup last time. So, right. Okay. However, however, and I think, you know, Josh, I think you, you put it on the shared drive. So you just thought it would automatically, but we just have to let, you know, Tammy know, um, and I'm, she'll do it. Cool. All right. We go with that then? Uh, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, all right. Payment of bills. Um, we have two different um, components there. We have prepaid and then we have a check run. Does anybody have any questions on the prepaid first? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one. It's on page 19 of the packet uh, under the superintendent. Then under the clerk, there's a, a fee. It's the same amount. Uh, for notary bonds for Josh and Tammy. Uh, it makes it appear that, and then it's again under the clerk, the same thing. It makes it appear that it's being paid twice. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, uh, Tammy is probably under the superintendent's line and Josh would be under the clerk's line, but in putting them both on both areas, it, it makes it appear that it's being paid twice is all. Uh, I can, uh, I can, I'm not sure if Josh or Tammy entered this into the PO system, but um, I can see if we can get that corrected, Bill. Yeah, it's, it, I, I'm sure it's, it's the amounts are, it's probably 55 for each one of them. Actually, uh, it, yeah. it, it's just that they, you know, uh, one should be under one category and the other under the, under the other is all it's. Uh, yeah, I think it's under the description line that, that, and it just got. And then when they break it out, then they charge it out separately. But I'll see if they, um, this one, I don't know if they can fix it because if it's a prepaid, it's already been done and the check's gone and it's been journalized. So it might be too late for this one, but moving forward, um, we can make a note and take that sure. into consideration. Yeah, that's I fine. 
I don't see the second one. Is there are there are both of them on page nineteen? Yeah. One's on oh, the there it is. I see it. Yep. Okay. So basically, it should have said under the under the uh, under the clerk, it should have been you know notary for Josh Sutton, and under the supervisor, it should have been notary for Tammy Klein. Exactly. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. That was the only comment I had. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any others? Um, I have one. Uh, for Black Swamp Services on their bill that they bill us monthly. There's a billable expense for mileage reimbursement for 2020 for $510.08. And I didn't see in their contract where we allow for expenses for mileage. I talked to Nancy, who's uh, also a contracted employee and her expenses are spelled out in her contract what she does and does not get for uh, billable expenses what page is that on uh the bill yeah where is um, it i don't even know where it's at in here but uh let me see i'm uh, looking for 236 property operating and maintenance Jamie, thanks for answering the question on that earlier. 236. Uh, I think it'll be in the second group of bills. Yeah, second group. It's on page 26. It's way off. All right. Josh, can you forward the contract so we can take a look at it and read through it before Monday? Which contract do you want to Black Swamp. Um, Steve, I already have it. I can um, I can send it to everybody. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay. That's the only question I have. All right. Anybody else? All right. Um, superintendent's report. Mitch. Um, real quick here. I mean, I, you know, I, I guess I could say each one, but I figured you could just go through. No. All right. <laughs> so uh, we obviously the Artisan Hall. Um, today, Todd received another offer on that structure. I have had now an opportunity to speak with him. I have forwarded that email that he received to each of you. And you can look at that at your leisure. And we can discuss all that uh, on Monday. Mitch, I, I read through the email, but I don't see like a purchase agreement or an LOI. It just, I just see an email. Yep, is that, is, that is all we received at this time. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Is it appropriate to uh, to consider other LOIs when we've already got one on the table? Uh, I would think so, because it's an interesting question. I, it. Yeah, no, there has nothing been accepted at this time. Right, but we didn't technically respond to it in a in a, uh, in a reasonable time frame or at all yet, from what I understand. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to keep us out of hot water. Yeah. Unless there's some type of uh, township policy that would dictate otherwise, uh, I would I would seem to think that because you've not taken any response at this time, you you have the I guess ability or right to examine anything else that's received by you. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, I think the Ostable sewer contract uh, document. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, um, uh, White, Woja, and Curtis, um, or wait, yeah. Our, our interim attorney have uh, examined that. I can never remember which is first in the uh, sequence, but, right. uh, but the, they've done their examination. Uh, they had consultations with Osabel's attorney. Uh, they've also had other consultations uh, with USDA. 
and uh, you have before you kind of the re-revised uh, document. Um, and we'll recommend that you uh, approve it uh, pending. We'll put the correct number on the gallonage in and the correct dates, obviously, if, if it gets passed uh, Monday night. And I, I think that the, what they had stated in their original memorandum had the 7.92 per thousand. Uh, that would be incorrect. That would be back, back to 2016. The rate for last year was uh, 949, and that should go up to 1072 as of January 1st of 2021 with the 13% yeah. uh, increase. And right. uh, so I think we need to have you know that uh, in there. And I think as they suggested, the year 2020 would be the appropriate baseline year uh, going forward. And then the, the other questions were, had to do with the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, time of the contract being, uh, they have it as three years. And the attorney mentioned that the previous one was five. But in my talks with Lisa Sutton, uh, she looked back and it appeared that the contracts uh, varied back and forth between three and five years. Uh, she was under the impression they were all three, but when she reviewed it, she found this one was five, but the one previous to that was three. Uh, but the language in here says that it's a it's an ongoing contract that would be month to month if if we didn't renew a contract. So uh, I, I don't see where having it as the three years would be a problem. So, so is everything for that Asable sewer contract all set then, pending the uh, the correct number for the gallonage? Yeah. I, th I think so. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> they just needed about three days to, to take a good look at it. So, yep. Yep. So, um, then we have the boiler pump purchase for the Ani Medical Center. I will implore all of you, please do not table this. <laughs> um, this item has to be acted on Monday. Um, so we continue to have problems with, uh, the old heating system out there. And so, I, and you have the recommendation to purchase a boiler pump, uh, actually two boiler pumps through Goyette um, 9600. So this is, I hate to say, this is kind of one of those costs that being the landlord of a building of that type and age is, uh, is upon us. So um, I'll be honest with you, we'll, we'll be coming back later uh, at, a, at a future meeting to kind of uh, maybe nudge you in a certain direction about thinking about putting that up for some serious uh, sale consideration. So um, we already have. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Mitch, are, are the pumps, I mean, they have heat out there right now, but they're just limping along. I, they're limping along. Oh, yeah, limping along, and I think there's a you know a, a pretty bad there's a leak, and so there's an odor that's coming into the building. There is. And that's it's part of the boiler. That's part of the boiler pump problem as well. Yeah, I mean, don't don't doesn't the superintendent have ten thousand in an emergency fund? You can well, but it was but the other bit is more, and again, I don't want to. We're right up on that on that threshold. So, you know, I, I, again, I don't know anything about these contractors, but if one of you said, oh my goodness, a, a certain contractor, I wouldn't use them for this purpose. That could be weighed into a consideration. So, and since the other uh, bid is more uh, over 10,000, I thought that was prudent for us to put it here. So okay. are we, go ahead, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. You're fine. I'm just wondering about. I mean, we're 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 putting a bunch of money into this boiler, and in, uh, in a facility that we're trying to sell. And is is, are we throwing good money after bad? Is my question. Is that boiler so old that putting a new pump on it will fix it for now? But there's going to be other components that are going to be bad in the very near future. Is it worth fixing it, or is it, or should we start looking at replacing it? And I know that that's a miserable thing to discuss, uh, but the large. Uh, replacement, we'd be talking about tens of thousands of dollars, maybe, maybe even yeah. more. Uh, yeah, I think I, we I actually looked at that once. This goes with being a landlord. Yeah, we did. Yeah. This yeah. goes with being a landlord. 
right? We right. But if we but if we put ten thousand dollars into it now and we fix those pumps, and then you know, and then at right at next fall something else on that boiler fails and we have to put another ten thousand dollars in to fix that you know the burner component or whatever the parts of a boiler might be that could go bad i mean are we setting ourselves up to try and you know are we gonna are we just gonna continue to nickel and dime ourselves to death on this doggone heater or should it would it would we just be better to bite the bullet put a new system in there because it'll raise the value of the building and maybe it'll help sell it well i mean i guess the problem with that theory jeremy is it's such a large I mean, right now, um, you know, that's a large system that's heating a huge part of, you know, all this, all this space. In yeah. theory, the new people that purchase it would probably operate kind of like we did with the VA expansion, where you condominiumize or you separate and you have rooftop units that are a lot more energy efficient. I mean, the system that, that's in there is antiquated. And to try to get another system that's going to heat that many square foot would be I think we actually looked at price quotes before, and I mean, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars to replace like a system that would, you know, do that kind of span. Um, gotcha. But, but well, where if, is it? Yeah. If you so compartmentalize. If and right. So if we're, if we're talking about compartmentalizing it and we've got the, um, and we're looking at spending $10,000 on a boiler, would it be better just to go ahead and start zoning it out now, closing off the portions of the building that are not in use and putting in those rooftop heating units for those specific tenants? Would that be a better choice moving forward? Because then we're not dealing with that boiler anymore. We're not going to put a bunch of money into it and then have it get scrapped as soon as it gets sold anyway. I'm just looking for, you know, I'm just kicking it around. Right. That's what, well, that's you know. what we're, yeah, that's the point of this, these conversations. Um, I'm definitely not an expert, but um, I, I know that the, the few years that um, when I was employed with the township and being out there and talking with, um, you know, Kevin Smith that used to be, you know, had, you know, that was taking care of that system. And even one of the, one of the people that provided a cost proposal, um, Chuck, Swiker, you know, um, he's a little bit higher. So that's why we're going with Goyette. Um, you know, they had, you know, indicated that rooftop units are, you know, the way to go. That being said, we have no idea how anybody's going to carve out any of their spaces in there. I mean, you know, right now there's existing walls and there's um, offices, but maybe the person that comes in is going to, you know, kind of like what we did with the VA clinic, you bring a little bobcat in there and you, you demo mm -hmm. an area and put all new walls up. So right. I mean, those are just unknowns that we, you know, we would just be, my thought would be grasping at straws. So, um, but would it, be about, would it be about the same cost to put a rooftop unit in as opposed to fixing these, uh, these boiler pumps? I, I have, yeah, mm -hmm. I just expended my expertise. It'd probably be much, probably be much, <laughs> it'd be like much that. more. Yeah, it'd yeah be I much. would, yeah. And, okay. and then we, and yeah. we can't. I, can't abandon the current system and then just go to a rooftop for one section. It heats more than one area. I hate right. to say this, but you know, it kind of, I think about it as like a realtor, I would probably tell the potential seller, just, just ditch this building, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, put, amen, don't put money into that. that. Let the next, let the next owner do that. And however they want to heat it or cool it and let them figure that out. And, and maybe the price gets reflected accordingly, but yeah, because I can see if you put a system in thinking it one way and someone buys it and they wanted to do a different heating and cooling HVAC method, then we really kind of wasted our money in the, in the first place. So I think yeah. I hate to say uh, just keep it going, but if we could just keep it going until we can uh, divest this uh, property from our, uh, our inventory, I think that would be the, the prudent move. That, that has been the discussion for the last year or two for the previous board, that we need to uh, get out from under this, uh, this monstrosity that is a cost of so fortune and doesn't, doesn't pay its own way, uh, more or less. So I think to the point, you know, as a landlord, we've got a problem there where we need to get the heat going, which is going to require that we put these pumps in. And right. so if we do that, the problem solved temporarily, and then we move forward with uh, uh, putting a reasonable price on and, uh, and getting this building sold and let somebody else deal with the problems there. I think what we want to approach you with is kind of a more aggressive uh, sales approach. Yes. So, right, but, right, which well, we're talking about later that's on. That's something that Todd and I would, will bring to you at a future meeting. 
Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get to that. I guess uh, my, my only other question about it is how many times have we fixed things in this building that cost $10,000 over the last five, 10 years, where we're to a point where we fixed that boiler six times for $60,000 and we could have put in a new one for another 10. And we're, I mean, where, where is that threshold at? That, that I couldn't answer uh, immediately. I'd have to do some digging. So. All right. Well, I guess it's not that important. I'm just, just curious. Well, so. I, I think your, your, your uh, discussion is valid though. And I think it, it does weigh into the whole, um, what the township as a board, what do you want to do with this structure? And I, I think, yeah. and, and I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, I, I look across the, uh, the way here and I see this other structure being built, whether it's fast or slow is immaterial, knowing that our largest, uh, tenant will be moving and, right and i would i'll be honest with you i would rather divest the building before they leave <laughs> right that would be the ideal for sure yeah because it is a yeah, it is a six figure plus uh just o and m cost on this building per year so well here's a question then have we uh, have we explored trying to get a, a used component to make it work rather than buying new pumps maybe get one that's been used for a year somewhere else that way we can limp it along until we can sell it but it's not going to be such a hit to the bottom line of the township these are uh, built in the factory basically a as per order so there's nothing are. there's nothing in stock yeah. uh, the other is that the fact that the system is, uh, let's see, less than new or less than new. <laughs> <laughs> also kind of hinders our ability to go out and, and look for other uh, uh, alternatives. So Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I guess I'm, I'm done talking about it. No, I do. Yeah, you've spent your four minutes. That's right. I'm sorry. My, be, be I do quiet, Jeremy. The, the conversation is good, though, and hold yeah. those thoughts when we talk about that uh, facility again. Yeah, it's on the agenda, actually, in a couple of uh, items. <laughs> all right let's so. let's beat that horse to death okay. um, right. the, the interim attorney retainer i don't think we necessarily need to talk about that um the patriot appreciation flag request uh josh might be more uh expert on this than i am my as i stated my only concern is that we uh, continue to meet the uh, united states flag code what's that about josh um, it's just a flag I attached to the packet there. It just is um, for your police, firefighters, and veterans, current service. Just a flag to hang below ours here at the township in support of that. Um, I did look up under U.S. flag code. Uh, the only requirement is that it does have to be hung below the American flag. And if they're on the same pole, it had to be in a smaller size. So that's why I highlighted that we would go to that smaller size than our flag and have it put on there below and we can get that flag for just under $8 with free shipping. And uh, who was requesting that we put that uh, that flag up there? Me. It? Oh, it's just you? It's not another organization? All right, cool, cool. Nobody important, just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say I one. I just thought it'd be nice. Important. We have a lot of veterans in the community, and I mean, we do have a terrific mm -hmm. volunteer firefighter department, and we also sure. have our officers. So, just thought it was nice in all these trying times to let them know we appreciate all they do, especially days like today when it's snowing. I know the chief started his day early just for road safety and everything else. So, just a nice way to say thank you. Right on. What were you going to say, Mitch? Oh, nothing else. So moving on to Friedman uh, listing of the awning building. Here we are back at it. Hey, um, hey. If uh, this structure is not, we do not have an agreement with Friedman to list and sell this structure. Um, there is a suggestion by them to more aggressively attempt to sell it uh, through an auction process. Now, obviously, you can have you could have a retainer minimum price, but what that would do in their previous, it they have the ability to tap into buyers that we're who aren't seeing our our facility now. Meaning, they can get buyers from other states, other areas where our current setup 
I hate to say nobody's looking. Right. Um, I guess I, I'll chime in. I, I didn't know if Todd was going to be zoomed in today, and he is, he is not. But Todd and I actually met with Friedman uh, Wednesday, I believe. Yes, Wednesday, um, and went out to Ani Medical um, and did a tour. And um, just as a little bit of a recap, when the RFP was done this summer by the EIC for a new real estate, for a real estate vendor, both the Artisan Hall and Ani were identified on the RFP. Um, but then the EIC board decided to test the waters just with the Artisan Hall and not use the services with the Ani Medical Building um, at the time. So, so anyways, um, they hadn't actually been out there at all. So we did a full full tour and went, you know, and, and talked about current tenants. I mean, understanding that they're going to be leaving whenever the new building gets there and everything. And um, they thought this auction site would be an excellent match. And the... Um, felt that it would go uh, fairly easy. I mean, I hate to, I hate to say that, but they were, uh, they were thinking it would be a positive, you know, a positive thing. And the auction sounded kind of interesting to me in the sense that, um, you know, it's a, a month long or whatever else, everybody that participates in the auction is either pre-qualified for financing or has to show proof of funds. Um, you know, we can put a minimum price on there. And then, you know, like they said, we can we can like log in at the very end, like sometimes in the last 10 minutes of the auction, you get more people that are bidding and stuff, but they've sold stuff in the Detroit area. It's called, it's a somebody that they work with, it's called tenants, tenants or something, I can't remember exactly. Um, but they have sold, sold, sold stuff to people in California that they would no, not normally, you know, have the reach to. Um, and there's also a component where they do like a baseline assessment before listing it. And there's, um, you know, they're, they, you know, upfront those costs um, to do that. So, I mean, that's kind of a, you know, a, a good thing. Of course, then I asked the question, well, if it doesn't, you know, they're going to take that out of the proceeds. If, if it doesn't sell, then are we responsible to pay that, you know, that baseline assessment um, cost back? And what would that amount be? They, you know, you just need to, um, whatever you, Whatever you're asking the township to sign up for, you you need to give us a full proposal um, for right, what right. it is. So, um, but you know, it sounded pretty promising um, to me. And you know, again, they have the, the the things that they list. They have a buying pool that they deal with a lot for for medical, for Amazon, for all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, how, how many tenants do we have in that building right now? With a with an actual signed lease, we have yeah. one. I mean, with, it's not a month to month lease. We have one, and that's the VA clinic. So and that, every and the VA clinic's not moving. That's that one's staying there until further notice. Uh, well, in in theory, no. Yeah, I mean, they have a five year lease with a five year extension just on their one contract, and I would assume they're going to stay there for a long time. But the the positive pitch on that is you know, the tenant improvements that the VA did was about $1.2 million that they paid for. That is yep. the, that is our asset, i.e. that's a, you know, we get to keep, if they ever move out, you know, the, the township or whoever buys that property gains those assets. That doesn't include like exam tables and computer right, equipment right. or anything like that, but the whole remodel with the rooftop units and all of that is, is a tenant improvement that we keep as a landlord. Too bad so, we didn't talk yeah. them into fixing the boiler, huh? <laughs> uh, they have their own system. They didn't need to. Yeah. So, yeah. They, so they got, so they bypassed the boiler system for their office area. They, and put well, in the, they in moved the from, unit. yeah, they, they moved from the old part of, they moved from actually the newer part of the building that is serviced by the big boiler to the old part of the building, um, which none of those things have been running for years. And again, did their own internal, which they had to, they can't have like shared I don't want you to, I know this is not the technical term, but like shared air, you know, they have to be like um, individual. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because they're of their, by yeah. themselves. Yes. So, I mean, their utilities have to be separate. So anyways, they, they, um, even though Alcona is moving out, we still have them till about 2022 would be the guess. And that is a positive, according to these guys from Friedman, that's still a big rent revenue coming in. That's, they, they use the term no brainer several times for an investor to come in. So I don't know, it sounded pretty positive, but it doesn't yeah. seem like we can lose anything, um, you know, and might have something to gain. So basically what we're asking you is, are you willing to 
take a hard look at kind of a more aggressive sales um, program instead of what we've done to this point, which has been relatively passive. Yeah, I, I think and if, the, if the board does agree to that, then we will uh, go back to Friedman and and flesh this out more thoroughly. But we didn't want to, you know, get way into this before having at least some go ahead from you that uh, that you have an interest in a more aggressive uh, program approach. Yeah, when we when the, when the previous board uh, uh, took on Friedman to represent. Um, because we it was it was stated we'd we'd have them do the artisan hall first and then possibly the Ani uh, building, uh, we we looked into the the company itself and they're they're a pretty large uh, organization and they do and it is a, a, a commercial r realtor so they they handle they like Ann mentioned uh, they they deal with companies around the well, around the globe actually um, for commercial properties so I think I think as Ann mentioned earlier they they would have uh, the ability to contact a lot of people that we wouldn't we just wouldn't have uh, the ability to contact for something like this so I think I would like to see us move aggressively on this to uh, get this off our back and 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 stop pouring money into it like we have been and uh, make something happen here but okay yeah, I mean, and just, you know, food for thought, obviously, if we divest ourselves of this building, there's things that, you know, we as an organization are going to have to look at, um, i.e., we, you know, we currently store all of our records um, in that building. Um, we are allowing, you know, um, a community group to use the building, um, beautification. Um, so those are just, I'm just, you know, I'm not saying that we you know, that we have to build them a building or anything like that, please don't hear that. I'm just saying that we'll have to look at the fact that if, if we, you know, if, if we do sell Ani, we have some things that we're going to have to figure out. Um, and, and our, you know, our, our records room would be, you know, the first thing, I guess. Speaking of that, uh, of that records room and on a, on a different side note, uh, Mitch, would you add uh, building security to the, to the next meeting's agenda follow not, not this Monday, but the following one, uh, we need to start talking about the, there's been some issues with keys and some other things where we need to start looking at uh, an audit trail on who's going and where, what, at, what they have access to. And we need to start looking at maybe getting a system in place. that will help facilitate access to the areas that the employees need access access to while monitoring their access to set areas. And the, and the current key system is antiquated and unsecure. We don't know how many copies of those keys are out there. It's kind of a, kind of a mess. So if you could add that to a, uh, an upcoming agenda, I'd appreciate it. Sorry to jump off there, but that just popped into my mind when Ann said that records room. Has there been an issue, Jeremy? From what I understand, there was. Uh, Mr. Smansky was uh, trying to get to some records, and he was he was not allowed to have a key, and he had to sign a key in and sign a key out, and now he has a key. But uh, you know, but again, you know, I, when I asked him, I said, "Well, how many keys exist to that door?" He doesn't know. And can any of you tell me how many keys exist to any of the doors in the township facilities? I don't think anybody knows. We don't know how many copies have been made. Of, of any of those keys. And if we look at a security system that will have some kind of key carded access, we would have the ability to turn those key cards on and off at the at our leisure based on, you know, and, and we'd be able to act, give them back access to employees based on their level of, of requirement. So if they need access to the township hall, then they can walk up, tap that key card and get in the building. If they need access to their office, they tap the card, it lets them in their office. They want in the supervisor's office, they tap the key card and they're not authorized, they're not getting in there. And we don't have to have the key dance with everybody gets one issue to them when they're when they're hired on. This is your key card. This gives you access to all the areas that you need. And then uh, it would be much easier to facilitate, you know, keeping all of that stuff in order and in line. I thought actually we had some discussion about that with the previous board, to be honest. Where did it, did it go anywhere? Uh, I'm not sure. We yeah. not. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was like a long, I mean, we actually looked at a system. I think we got price quotes from somebody. Oh, somebody that um, did the, the, the keypad from Alpina. I can't remember the name of the company, um, but we, um, John Nordeen had gotten some information on that for the township hall. We never looked at anything like that for, you know, for Ani. Um, I guess in reference to what you're saying, Jeremy, in, in regard to Eric and access to the building, I, I think that's what we were trying, 
the whole, my thought anyways, and I think Jamie can maybe answer this better than I um, on key control is instead of making everybody a key to get in to get their, their records, i.e. in the records hallway that we're just utilizing a space in Ani Medical, there was supposed to be a key left in the clerk's office that you sign in and out similar to like when we used to have the, um, the uh, boardroom and, and anybody would use that. Instead of everybody being issued a key, then, then if they leave employment, we have to get that key back. We had a login where they actually picked up the key because in theory, there's really how many times you're gonna go get a record. I mean, it shouldn't be, you know, I mean, I guess it's an issue if the clerk's office, usually there was, there's always somebody there. There's the clerk or the assistant clerk. Obviously during COVID, things have changed a little bit. But for the yeah. most part, there was always somebody there for the, the nine hours of the day that the township office offices are open because um, they're open from eight to five. So uh -huh. there's usually always somebody there. But but that being said, I guess, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't want us to look into a, um, I mean, the building would be good, but in theory, if we're going to be selling any medical, doing any kind of keypad and spending too much money, um, anything over there seems like kind of a moot point at this time, but. True, and if we are going to be and if we are going to be moving the files around, then uh, if there's probably not going to be room for them at the township hall, or they'd already be there. Yeah. So we're going to have to probably look at you know moving those files to another location, another building that the township owns. And if we're going to have to do that, then uh, you know it might not be a bad idea to instead of putting a, put you know try to put a bunch of new keys in place and have a sign in sign out form that somebody could sign the one key out and forget to bring it back because they got a flat tire and somebody else needs. It would be easier and there would be more accountability and and, a, and, a, and an audit trail if they just everybody had a key code or a key card yep. and they could just beep and access the areas that they're allowed to access without yep. asking anybody else, without signing any more documentation and without having, you know, a bunch of physical keys rolling around yep. that may or may not have been copied, you know? Yeah. I mean, oh, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Definitely. I think right now, I, I think I have a key to my actual storage door, but to get into the building at Ani, um, I have to go to the clerk's office to get that key to get in the building. Yeah, I can't and, get in without that. And then I give it back when I'm done. Right. And with the whole COVID thing, I know that that's made, you know, made things a little bit more difficult. And it would, uh, and especially, you know, if there was an external keypad that there is an external magnetic key reader, and you can just bebop over there whenever you need to beep lets you in takes a log that you entered the building at such and such a time. You know, there's all the additional security features from that. And, uh, and, and the ability to look back and say, well, you know, actually Jamie was in there and she did do, she did grab that file Hammer. and, and, you know, and mm -hmm. she, and now she's got proof that she did that to show oh. that, yes, she did do that research. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's benefits to it as well. Oh, for sure. I hear you. Um, we could, I don't know if we could consider the old F and V building, um, over by DPW for our records as well, if we had them. That's where we, you mean like um, next to where we uh, demolished the uh, wastewater treatment or the um, whatever that thing was called. Their old office. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's yep. near the old drying beds for the. Yep. Uh, by the drying. Yep. yep. So that's where we were originally when building 70, it was that building 70 or 90. I 70. forget where we had. Yeah. So when building 70 closed um, that had, or not closed, I'm sorry, sold. Um, that's when the township moved the records over to the Ani metal because it, because it was space, but we did talk about you know, that, that structure um, out by DPW. So we should probably look at that. So sorry, I, I'm the one who started that whole conversation. <laughs> right. go, Ann. Sorry, TikTok. everybody. Sorry. So let's okay. On, let's go on to bathhouse improvements. All that's right. Pretty, okay. Sorry. That's pretty straightforward as well. So I'm not sure we need to, unless there's a specific question. What kind of improvements are they looking for here? Uh, basically, this is to uh, do some renovation, uh, new hot water heaters, um, things of that nature in these bathhouses. So it's, it's improving the mechanicals. So it was adopt. Yeah, it's in the capital improvement plan, um, Jeremy, which the township, you know, adopted, um, you know, for 20, you know, like a five-year plan. Oh, this is for Old Orchard Park. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking down by the beach and I was like, man, that oh, building's pretty new. Oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they get such heavy usage. Those things don't last uh, like your one at home. So. Are we talking, uh, let's see, the furnace and propane conversion and two water heaters. It, uh, are the water heaters listed in here as to what kind they are? Are we doing uh, on-demand water heaters? Or are we going to have tank nope. heaters? Nope, they're tank heater. Yep, they're Ream brand water heaters, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Is that, oh, the $573 each? Yep. Yeah. 
when's the last time that those uh, that those water heaters were replaced does any can do you know that i don't uh, i think it's yeah. been a very long time this is one of the original bathhouses that when they updated the brand new bathhouse if you go in the park and turn right and go all the way down mm -hmm. they got that great big beautiful bathhouse this one is if you go into the park and turn left it's, i think it's a green building and it's been there for decades and um, has not been upgraded in a long time so we're putting in com uh, commercial water heaters and they're only five hundred dollars a piece yeah that, that seems awful sound, right? awful low that's just me. I mean, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not some kind of, you know, expert in water heaters or anything, but uh, if we're going to, I mean, but $500 for a commercial water heater, I mean, that, that's about, that's about the size of a, of a 40, 50 gallon, just regular gas residential water heater. I think these are larger than forties. These are, I would hope so. I mean, if it's, I would, I would think they want something with a very high recovery rate for a bathhouse. Oh yeah, and that's why I, that's why I was thinking that you know maybe it would be a I don't know it would behoove us to look at some alternatives to a tank water heater and put in some because uh, uh, recently I was at a uh, gentleman's house running cable and there was a very 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 nice uh, on demand water heater mounted to the wall and uh, it could handle all kinds of ridiculous requirements and they had even bigger ones and yes they were a little bit more expensive but their longevity and their and their energy efficiency and all that and all that could be taken into account to maybe you know offset the cost of having a unit like that put in there and then instead of a giant tank in there it's just got a commercial on-demand water heater so when people are using it the water's hot and when people are not it doesn't use any fuel just in the, you know just yep thinking it, about it yeah. i don't it looks like the vendors that they um, identified for purchasing, I'm not familiar with Tom, Tom Mark, but then the other one was actually Home Depot. They have them in two different areas. Can we ask Al to attend the meeting and just answer a few questions? We yeah. could do that. Sure. Yeah. I think he said he was, actually, I think when he stopped by, he said he would. He was planning on Zooming in, Steve. Oh, okay. I mean, not today, but Monday, if the board yeah. had any okay. questions. So what I'm looking at here, there's actually three of them. There's the to the two mark Granger and the Home Depot. Those are three different quotes for the th for the th for th uh, the same things being replaced. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Doy, I'm being dumb. Yeah. So That's whatever Tone Mark is is the cheapest run. Tone Mark would be our uh, our recommendation. Right. And we're recommending it just based on the cheapest price. Uh, that that what they're giving us will satisfy what we want and cost. Just seems awful cheap for a big old uh, commercial sized water heater, but okay. But we'll have we'll have Al come and speak to everybody about that. Thank Rock you. and roll. Okay. okay. The, so the next is the SCADA system. Um, I'm not even going to try to talk about SCADA. Uh, my knowledge about SCADA is not even close to Mr. Freeman's. Um, so we will have Mr. Freeman at the meeting, and he could speak to this topic. Um, and, and much more uh, detail. Um, uh, I, I mean, does anybody, has anybody reviewed that section that you have a question that you want us to get to Rick prior to so he can prepare or everybody's just good with um, Rick? Um, well, I had, I had a question, I guess, for Rick is, you know, one, one of the two quotes, I guess, had, uh, I mean, these things are going to be on the cell network, but one had the inclusion of that monthly charge within the capital equipment and the other one had a fee for it so i just got, I want to understand it a little bit more so. okay so you think steve he'd probably be able to answer that on the fly oh, monday yeah. or is oh, that yeah. something we yeah. should okay no, I, I just know. i just thought if there was something we needed to get to him to prepare for no i think but. it's pretty well laid out if you go through it i just have questions on how the system works okay, okay. all right and then finally is the eic request for a joint work session So, did they give any like um uh, I mean I know I looked at that but like any kind of a time frame are they they wanting, were kind like, of helping soon? uh after the Valentine's uh it, I think I'm trying to think of it, it was Thursday after Valentine's Day um let me look real fast here when's Valentine's Day four well four, I'm four, just kidding four, <laughs> uh, but it would be the 18th I think is what they were like. their first hope uh but they're open to other dates as well. Isn't, isn't that the day, right? Isn't that the day before the work session for the next meeting? <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Yeah. Yep. Is is there the uh, is, do we have the ability to maybe just roll their request for a joint session into our work session, or is that a bad idea? It wouldn't be if we uh, stay quick and and nimble. <laughs> Uh, I think we want to spend some time on this one, though, so because it's going to so, discuss. Yeah, it seems so, like it. Yep. I think we need but to I guess do it as soon as we can. If, so. if you're agreeable to it, then we will uh, attempt to to arrange that before the meet before our work session or after. Well, like, well, a different right, day. Their maybe. their first their first desirable date was the 18th. So, if we're kind of a little leery about that or unavailable, then we'll have to get back with them about other dates. I, I mean, right now I'm all right with it. We're just uh, running into lots and lots of time. <laughs> yeah. I can be available. Yeah, we'll make it work. I want to hear what they need. Okay. Well, we'll we'll talk about it on Monday, and then uh, I'll send something out to them uh, based on feedback from the from the board, and we'll arrange accordingly. All right, then we have a resolution and ordinance on the agenda, recreational marijuana. Yes, this is uh, um, Smoke it if you got it, right? Hey, yo. Bill, I can open this up and if, if I miss something, uh, if I'm remiss, then you can jump in. Uh, basically, the uh, Planning Commission, uh, through their discussion about this topic, uh, recommended that the Township Board consider um, directing the planning commission to begin deliberations on a recreational marijuana um, uh, program sounds like that's a that's a wrong word uh, a recreational marijuana um, process uh, to be included into the our code so you're talking about so instead of having just uh, dispensaries for medical marijuana only, now we're asking if they can if we can have a, a dispenser or a, a, a marijuana shop for recreational use. Basically, the the equivalent of a uh, of a pot liquor store. <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Is that but that's what they're talking about here is to add that add the ability for a recreational marijuana sales facility to be added to our code of the current medical marijuana facilities. Yes, they want uh, direction from the board as to whether they should begin uh, deliberations and, and uh, formulation of a recreational marijuana section of the code. Yeah, that's because that's because the township had opted out of the recreational marijuana back uh, oh, six or eight months ago, or I forget the time frame, but uh, that was because the state had not put in place uh, permanent rules as it related to recreational marijuana. It had been passed in the election, uh, but the marijuana regulatory agency, which took over from Laura, uh, had not put permanent rules in place. And so the township, we opted to uh, not take action and to, and to opt out of recreational marijuana until such time is there were permanent rules in place. So we knew what, when we draft an ordinance, uh, we'll know what, how we can draft it and what we need to do. Uh, but, the, but the board would have to approve uh, um, going moving forward with a recreational marijuana ordinance. And it would, it would sort of fall in line with our, our medical marijuana ordinance that we passed uh, a couple of years ago. And a lot of the language would be similar in the Basically, what's happening right now is the state is awarding licenses to established medical marijuana licensees because all of the work's been done, all the background checks, all the financial checks, uh, it, virtually everything's been done. So they, it's just a, a real quick process to approve a license to a medical marijuana facility for recreational marijuana. And um, in our ordinance, we have allowed two uh, for provisioning centers, I wouldn't see that changing. Um, I, I, I think maybe we need to take a look at increasing the number of grow facilities that we allow in the township, but that's, you know, that's another, that's another matter that would uh, come up when it's time to approve the ordinance. But right now, what the Planning Commission is suggesting is that the Township Board uh, take a look at approving uh, drafting a uh, a recreational marijuana ordinance for the township. 
And Bill, correct, correct, uh, but this is the correct situation. Osabo and East Hollis has already opted in. So, yes. In the county, it's already here. And yes. It really, it's just going to level the playing field for the people that are investing right now. You know, yeah, and quite frankly, the, uh, the, 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 the two that we have ongoing right now uh, who have applied for licenses and have been, you know, uh, between the state delaying the issuance of licenses for such a long time and then the then when you know last year COVID came along uh, you know interrupted a lot of things um, the the current licensees that we have their business model would be you know is pretty much jeopardized to be limited only to medical marijuana because quite frankly uh nobody's nobody's bothering with the medical marijuana uh, uh, certificates they don't need them anymore they can just go purchase the marijuana anywhere they want so to just have a strictly medical marijuana facility is uh, uh, nobody no no business person in the right mind would move forward with that because uh, you're, you're limited on on what you can do so uh, this would open it up and, and allow the the business people to have a viable business plan. And the other part is the state changed the way the tax structure was going to be. We were supposed to be collecting, you know, taxes on the medical marijuana side. And then when, uh, when the, the voters opted to pass the recreational, the state and their infinite wisdom took away the taxing from the medical because they knew that all the money was going to be spent on the recreational. And so now the recreational facilities are the ones being taxed. And uh, so that's where we would we would gain revenue from from that that source uh, in the taxation of those facilities. So again, it's time to jump on the bag bandwagon or get run over, huh? Right. Well, I mean, so it's basically we're we're just it doesn't. You're, and and by what I'm know, saying now doesn't say which way I'm going to go one way or the other, but but all I'm saying is by us um, giving the planning commission um, the ability, you know, we're going to look into it. They have to come up with an ordinance and come back to us. So then, you know, we still can then, if we don't like certain components of it or whatever else, then the board, you know, can and voice their opinion. But um, you this know, just gives the planning commission direction. Yes. Yes, but, but like 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 Mr. Westerbar said, I mean, it levels the playing field um, for the what what else is going on in the county right now. So, cool. Okay. Um, All right. Any other questions on that? All right. We're on to other. Um, anything with the bike path committee appointment? Josh is asking to be appointed on the committee. Basically, I think is how I interpret that. Yeah, we have we have had two two members on that board uh, from the beginning. I've been on it for the last three and a half years. I would be happy to continue with that. And uh, if, if Josh wanted to be the other um, board member on that committee, that would be fine. Uh, Asabo has two members on the board. Okay. All right, now we have a Warrior Pavilion fee waiver request. Any questions on that? Uh, just uh, a comment on my part. These, this is probably one of the most difficult issues is in my opinion that I've had to deal with since I've been on the board. We have so many uh, great charitable organizations uh, that do so much good in this community. The problem is under state law, we cannot contribute to any sort of charities. There's very limited uh, things that we can do in that capacity. And by waiving a fee, that is considered uh, a, a charitable contribution. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, thing to do to say no to these organizations but in my opinion that's uh, what we what we need to do but the other thing is they're they're even if we were to approve it they're asking for a waiver of the deposit and generally and when we've granted these before we don't waive the deposit because um, they get that money back uh, and it's just to protect us from any 
damage and, and cleaning up. But uh, we have to be very careful about, you know, making these uh, contributions. It's, it's not allowed under the state constitution. I wouldn't be inclined to really, I mean, that's a slippery slope, start giving away, uh, get, you know, waiving the rental fee for this, for this organization. And then and we're just smitten with letters asking for the same. Exactly. Yeah. We, you, you, it's, it's spelled out in the, in the statute. There are limited numbers of things that a township can contribute to. Uh, one, one is the historical society. Um, that is specified in the in the statute that the township can contribute to. Uh, otherwise, if, if you're not getting anything in return, uh, you can't make a, a contribution of public money of tax you know money. So it's uh, and and for me it's a, it's a difficult thing. It's come up numerous times in the board at the board. I'm sure Jamie remembers that. Uh, you know, we've talked about different things and it's, it's a small amount of money and different board members have wanted to make contributions to different things, but uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a gray area. It's, it's, it's strictly prohibited under the, under the state constitution. And um, uh, my suggestion has always been that board members that, you know, wanted to make a contribution to that, that they do it personally. You know, I mean, if you wanna make a personal contribution, a board member certainly, able to do that i have seen in in the past and i can't speak about audubon um but they i have seen what i would call service contracts which is uh we will waive this fee in exchange for they have to provide uh, a two-hour program um public program you know to be held um in a, in a facility of our choosing and so it's open to the public and they bring in speakers and all that to educate the public about certain topics or things like that. I have seen that type of a, a setup before. So, I mean, that could be something, again, it's, it's kind of when you, uh, unless you have kind of a service contract, like you're providing a service in exchange for something. Um, yeah, it, it, it is a difficult uh, path to, to uh, well, and that's yeah that that Mitch that's exactly right if 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 you're making a contribution and then you're getting something in return then that's a whole different story but when yep. you're not getting anything in return and you're only making the contribution that is it is strictly illegal so but, like I said, yeah, you, yeah you might be able to pull that off with that uh, with that organization and say look we'd be willing to do it but we would also require of you a like I say, a public program to be presented at a future time uh, within this calendar year. And, you know, it's open to the public and you're going to bring in, you know, speakers or whatever to uh, educate the public, uh, the township's public about uh, certain topics. And yeah, that, could exactly. be, that could be memorialized in a, in a one-page document. Yeah, the only problem with that would be that is if that's the agreement and then if it turns around and they want to use the Warrior Pavilion, we wouldn't be able to waive the fee on that a second time. No. So, <laughs> be, but. Well, there's leeway, I, I thought, and I haven't looked at the policy in a long time, but I thought there was stuff if it, if the, if it was open to the public, if there was a public, determined a public benefit, that kind of stuff. Um, but this is obvious, I mean, I mean, and I'm not saying that the Audubon as a whole is not a public benefit. I'm not disputing that. But they're talking about, you know, a year, you know, with potluck dinner and election of officers and that kind of stuff. It doesn't sound like they're talking about, um, you know, any kind of like a public meeting kind of a deal where the public would be invited anyway. So it doesn't seem like there's a gray area. But I thought in the past we've kind of looked at that before, you know, if it was open to the public and felt that there's a trade off, you know, but I don't know, I think maybe we even shot down the nonprofit roundtable there. I don't remember what you guys decided on that. So. But yeah, I hear you. All right. Um, then the next is the tip of the Met watershed foot site use request, um, mobile bo uh, boat wash. Any questions on that? Where are they planning on doing this? Usually they, do it in the parking lot at foot site. How are they going to uh, treat their runoff water that they use to wash all of these contaminants off of these boats? 
I don't remember the answer to that, but I know we had one in previous years because they've done it for the last couple of years. I don't know if Bill or Tim remember that, but they used to do it at the boat launch. Yeah, we've done those before. They had one at Ratliff, I think, a year ago or so. Not well, more than two years ago, probably. It wasn't last year. I don't think it's anything that's bad for the environment, Jeremy. I think they um, tried to get all the, um, like, yeah, oh, the, the zebra species. mussels and stuff like that off so that doesn't carry it to other lakes and stuff like that. Right, but if they're just washing them off in the parking lot and the runoff water is going right into the lake, well, it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> I mean, if they're not capturing all the runoff from those boats, you know, then the, the, then the detergents and the waxes and all that stuff that they're using are going right in the water. And so are all the contaminants that they're supposedly washing off. So I'm just, I'm just curious as to how they're, you know, they're talking about the cleanliness of the property and liabilities and all that stuff, but, and that they leave everything in good order, but they didn't describe how they're going to catch that water and what they're going to do with it. So I was just curious. Um, there's probably something in the past board packets and the narratives, I guess, that would probably address something like that. Yeah, it has to do with invasive species. So they're what they're doing is examining the boats and making sure there aren't invasive species. Uh, that I don't. They're waxing. Or, so they, yeah. so they will will take those off and then they don't go in the lake. Otherwise, if they're just rinsing off the boats that come out of the lake, uh, it, it's it's water that came out of the lake anyway, and and weeds or whatever that uh, would are naturally right. occurring in the lake. So it doesn't really create a problem well i figured that they were that they were trying to wash the boats before they get put into the water so if you're bringing your boat from downstate you know from this lake that you have a house on and you're coming up to your summer home for you know in oscoda and you bring your boat from that lake to ours to have you know and that 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 waterway that they're using down there has contaminants that we don't want in our waterway up here so we're going to wash your boat and cleanse or sterilize it of those contaminants before it goes into our water and here in iosco county and if that's what they're doing, you know, I, I guess I just, you know, I've got, I've got some questions about how they're doing that. And I, you know, I'd like to, is there a, a Ruth Golm as the president there? Is, should I just contact her individually and talk to her about that? Or is that information that the board would like to hear? Well, I think there's quite a bit of information in the packet, in our, in our packet about this program. And I, and it's basically around invasive species, not necessarily chemicals. Yeah. Well, that's what they're, they're talking about, what they're trying to prevent. And I think it's a right. great idea. I'm just asking, how, how, how are you going about, you know, doing this prevention? And there's a lot of information in here about what to tweet and what to post on Facebook and some sample news, art, news articles and volunteer outreach language. But I don't really see anything on the technical side of it as, you know, what we're going to do to the boat and what we're going to do with the contaminants that we find. And that's I just would like to know what they're going to do with those. It appears that the contact person program questions is an Ashley Soltziak. Uh, it has an email address for her. It doesn't have a phone number contact. Right. Well, Ruth, uh, Miss Golm has listed her phone number on the original on the on the top letter, along with her email address. And so I didn't know, I guess I'm asking if if you would like, you know, if I'd like to reach out and discuss some of those things with her and uh, find out how they're doing that. And I just didn't know if that's something that I should just call her and ask her to come to the board meeting so that everyone can hear what she has to say, or if nobody cares but me and you can go get your answers, your questions answered and leave us out of it type Ruth of situation. Bowman's, this is Ruth Bowman's for the Audubon Society. That's yeah. Oh, is that the top one? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Good gets the one right don't above it. Her. I'm an edgy. Yeah, don't call her. Come down, 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 to, uh, yeah. come down to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a program, it says uh, programmatic uh, questions asking Ashley Solciak. Maybe Mitch can follow up and get an answer for us by Monday. Oh, we'll see. I, I can try to contact this uh, person and see what her availability is. It says they have a partner, Part one of the partners is the Michigan DNR, so I'm just asking how the DNR approves it and come back to us. I should. I think it's a great uh, a great deal that they offer this service. I mean, it's not there's no cost to the township and there's no cost to the people that wish to utilize it. It's just probably grant based and they just go out and do it. Right. It's kind of what it looks like to me. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. But. We'll see if uh, we can get a little more inf information for Monday. Sweet.
Okay. Um, then the next two are um, one is the planning commission appointment and the other is the zoning board of appeals appointment. Um, there was supposed to be like a, there was a, the email that I sent actually had the, um, the, the terms. They're actually one year terms. And the reason being is because of the current expiration of the other members and then not, you know, having everybody expire at the same time. So both of them are one year terms. Any questions on the two that are in there? As, as uh, the, only, hmm? the only question I had, Ann, was uh, I don't see any information on addresses or uh, whether they're actually, well, the one says he lives in Oscoda, the other says lives in the Oscoda commute area. Right. Just and the sure addresses, both... yeah. Um, Tammy says that uh, Tammy um, Klein indicated that she redacts that information from, um, you know, posting. I mean, they're both Oscoda residents. If you put their name into BSNA, you'll find where their houses are. But we generally don't post people's personal addresses, is what she said. So she's the person who actually whited out their addresses um, before putting them in the um, packet. Okay. Is do you know? Is that? A, I mean, have we always done that? I mean, according to her, I, I'm just going by what she said. Yes, okay. she's the All one right. who um, took the information out on the last ones that we had in there and re removed that. So. Okay. But I, I'm just yeah. I'm that's what she said. So. Mr. Hume, huh? Yep. Look at that. All right. Um, last is DPW uh, resignation. Um, and I mean, I think everybody's aware uh, Chris Kitchen has resigned. Um, and we've already accepted the app. We have already accepted it. I mean, you know, I mean, it's been accepted by the, I guess, payroll, I guess you would say. By me. Yeah, or by Mitch as the pay, as the uh, human resource director, but I had been told by both uh, the payroll office, you know, being um, the deputy clerk, and I think Jamie mentioned too that normally we um, have them on the board, you know, um, uh, agenda just so we can acknowledge um, the service and so on. So, do we know why he's leaving? Is that something uh, that we should discuss at the board level? I don't, I don't uh, know what the protocol no. is there. No. No. No, we don't know, or no, we're not answering that question. I, I do know, but but no, we 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 shall not discuss that. Mm, interesting. Okay. I mean, it's not interesting. I don't think in the thing that you're thinking, Jeremy. But it's just interesting in the sense that we can't discuss. Oh, I have no personal. idea. Yeah. I've never met the guy. I don't know why he would resign. I don't know why he would stay. I just, you know, oh, okay. I was just curious yeah. as to, uh, you know, if it was, uh, if it was a personal reason with that was personal or if it was a personal reason with, you know, something at the township level that he was unhappy with, or did he get a better job? But if it's not something we should discuss, then questions off the table, moving on. <laughs> I don't see his letter um, in the board packet. I don't either. You okay. wish us to include it? We will get that out. Uh, always, it's always been included. Yeah, we, we almost always approve it, but normally there's a the letter in the packet that we can review. Usually, I can't say always, I take that back. But the majority of the time, the letter has been presented to the board. I just I could not find any procedural reason why that was taking place. So that it was on the board packet. And yeah, why why would the board be uh, accepting resignations of uh, staff? Because I'm I'm sure seasonal people probably leave our employment too, and I, I doubt the the board accepts their resignations as well. So no, uh, we don't do seasonal people because usually most of them come back each year, okay. um, but. We do have always, in the 20 years that I've been here, have always put on the agenda to accept somebody's resignation. And like Ann said, to recognize their dedication to the township and their service in many years, especially somebody with as many years as Chris Kitchen had. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's too bad that we are doing Zoom meetings because honestly, in the past, we've always recognized them at a board meeting or at a function. We've had potlucks or so, something like that and, you know, given them the recognition that they deserve. 
Right. And I know, I mean, I think the plan is to do something when, when we're all allowed to do that, um, whenever that year <laughs> may be. Um, right. but, uh, yeah, but, but this at least is a step towards that, I guess, because then in theory, I'm, I'm thinking it will be in the paper at least. Um, and there'll be some, you know, some, you know, recognition that way, including his letter. So are we, uh, are we advertising for a replacement? Oh. Myself, myself and Mr. Palmer are discussing that at this time. What our yeah. move will be. Mr. Palmer. Mr. Uh, not Mr. Palmer. Uh, Mr. Hamlin, sorry. I was going to oh. say, I, think, I was <laughs> going to say, I think, Bill just, I think Bill sorry just asked that. the question. So I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> That's, right. say, that's, good. that's news to me, but yeah. I'm happy to, do, happy to help. If Bill, it, no. yeah, Bill Palmer, stop volunteering for stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, <laughs> right. Bill and Bill, it happens. What? Yeah. What? One, one's a William and the other's a William. So I. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that um, I guess we we will get that. Not I guess we'll get the letter um, on the. Uh, we'll send an email. To, you know, to Tammy to make sure that gets included in the packet so that it's uh, it's actually it in in his personnel file now. So I'll have to ask uh, Josh to uh, have Shelley retrieve it and scan it. Is okay. there any is there any reason, Mr. Mitchell? Is there any reason that you believe that that letter should not be posted to the uh, meeting agenda minutes? Mm. Just out of curiosity. Correct. Is the letter addressed to the board? No. Um, it just basically, to, I'm looking at the letter. I have a copy. I may, ha I may yeah. have to review it. Yeah. I may have to review yeah. it. Um, I mean, if it has personal sure. and confidential information in it, then, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe we shouldn't put it on the board packet and all that fun stuff. I wouldn't mind reviewing it uh, either way, but I, that's, that's kind of why we're asking, I guess. I'll have to take a quick look at it and make sure we don't. Uh, okay. I, I actually have a copy. So I will just give that to you, Mitch, when we finish and walk out of the office. Okay. So it's it's addressed to the charter um the charter Osco to township. So but I will give you a copy so that you don't have to pull that, Josh. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we are um oh what do we oh we just had an you know the regular the Hushra O and M report from January um is the last agenda item. I mean on our February 8th meeting, sorry. So, okay. Nice. Yeah, um, are we ready to open it up to public comment or any more discussion? Uh, just a quick note to Tim and Jeremy. Uh, I've reached out to IT Wright uh, and we've had a little back and forth. Uh, he's gonna send me a link to his calendar uh, so we can pick a date to meet with him uh, virtually. Okie dokie. Mr. I think his name is Eggleston. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of, uh, I didn't, I haven't really reached out and started talking to them specifically about anything. I've been, you know, I've been doing a little bit of reading on the back end, just kind of prepare for, you know, the different uh, things that we may have to face. I've just been kind of waiting for you to take point on that. And it sounds like you have. So just keep me, just let me know and I'm, let Mr. Cummings know, and I'm sure we'll work it out and get in there and get it discussed. Cool. All right. And then I got, I'll just, um, we also talked about the my, I'm sorry, is that my CTV or whatever? I know you had mentioned that before, Jeremy, that contract. Are we still looking into yeah. that, I guess? Mr. Cummings. Just, yeah, Mr. Cummings had uh, had rightfully postponed that discussion uh, because there were some other things that we needed to kick around to make sure that everything was on the up and up, um, if you know, and make sure that everything was taken care of properly. Um, I, I I have not had a chance to uh, to call Mr. Cummings yet and set a meeting for us to really sit down and delve into the meat of that issue so that we can get it resolved one way or the other. Uh, I should probably do that. So after this meeting, I'll give him a call and see where we're what when, when his uh, next free availability time is okay i just know time. we had talked about you know putting it on the agenda so i just uh didn't want it to fall through the cracks or whatever that kind you know sure. that deal. okay yep. all right so anybody else before we go to public comment 
All right, uh, we are now at public comment and we have a couple people on the phone. Um, I'm going to see if I can just unmute all. I actually am hitting the button that says allow participants to unmute themselves. So in theory, you should be able to unmute yourself or send me a like a raised hand or even a. Um, uh, I think everybody might have ran though. Yikes, where'd they go? Oh, fire tablet's still there. I don't know if you have anything to say or questions or Greg Schultz is on the line. Um, and the press was there, but I think she, I don't see her now. So anybody have a, I, I don't I don't see anything. I don't see a raised hand and I don't see a comment at all. So I'm assuming there's no comment. Well, then real quick, I did uh, uh, one thing that I did forget to bring up is that um, Mr. Laporte had requested uh, at the last meeting to have the community center on the agenda and a discussion thereof. And I do not see it on there. Is that because it's on the next one or did that just get uh, dropped by the wayside there? I, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, again, I'm not saying just because he asked for something doesn't mean we're going to not, you know, I mean, it, it's not on this agenda. No. Yeah, I think I think and um, his his comment was to have it included in the master plan. Right. I thought that's so actually. The, yeah. And we, we are we are putting a paragraph in this revised uh, master plan um, to talk a little bit about the, the uh, community center. Right. Right. And I think you're uh, correct, Bill. Uh, Bill. He was in Jeremy. Um, he was wanting to make sure because it wasn't in the master plan and he wanted to make sure it was in there um, so that if you know, or when, you know, in their mind, when we're ready to, uh, to build or do whatever that, that it's in the plan so we can seek, you know, funding help if need be. So right just the only, to the, you know, right. the only, the only reason I mentioned it is because I'm almost sure that he, that during his public comment, he specifically requested that it be put onto a meeting agenda. Well, right. And, and just it, FYI, yeah, I'm sure and I hear you and it would be probably something when we start talking about the budget, um, as well. Um, and you know, um, but I guess it's up to the board. So, all right, any other, I guess, well, we kind of went past that, but um, I guess I will, we need a motion to adjourn, right? Or do we just adjourn? We just adjourn. All right, thanks. I knew you would answer that, Bill, or Mitch. We can't have a motion. Huh? <laughs> what? We can't have a motion. All right. Oh yeah, no voting. Okay, well, let's just adjourn and I hope everybody has a good weekend and um, uh, the roads uh, clear up. Everybody safe to travel. Okay. Yep. Bye. Don't forget, don't forget your earmuffs and your uh, and your gloves. All right.